Hi, I'm Nancy Conrad. I'm the wife of the third guy to walk on the moon. I met Pete through mutual friends in the late 1980s after his career at NASA had ended. We were married in 1990 and we were together until his death in 1999. Pete, along with his crewmates Alan Bean and Dick Gordon, made history when Apollo 12 successfully landed on the moon just a few short months after Apollo 11 became the first crew mission to do so. And while Neil Armstrong's first words invoked the seriousness of the moment, Pete's first words, yippee! Man, that may have been a small one for Neil, but that's a long one for me. While landing on the moon was a great human achievement, it was also lots of fun. Alan Bean was the lunar manager pilot of the flight. He, along with Pete, achieved a precise landing at their expected location on the lunar surface. They smuggled aboard a camera timer and a tripod with the hopes of taking a photo of the two of them standing next to each other on the moon. Sadly, these items got buried in the rock box and they weren't able to take what would have been the first moon selfie in history. After the Apollo program, Alan Bean became the commander of Skylab 3 and was in the backup crew for the American-Soviet Apollo-Soyuz program. In 1981, he resigned from NASA to devote his life to painting. One of his paintings entitled The Fabulous Photo We Never Took imagined the pose he and Pete may have struck in that lost photo. Dick Gordon was the command module pilot for Apollo 12. He and Pete were old friends, having been roommates on the aircraft carrier USS Ranger. The two went on to work together on Gemini 11. During this flight, they set an altitude record and Gordon performed two spacewalks. After the Apollo program, Dick worked in the astronaut office, became the chief of advanced programs in 1971, and later worked on the design of the space shuttle. Before joining NASA, Pete was a naval aviator. During his pilot days, he was asked to apply to the astronaut program. However, he found the medical testing invasive and unnecessary, and after a series of practical jokes, NASA deemed him not suitable for long-duration spaceflight. Later, it was Mercury astronaut Alan Shepard who convinced him to reapply, and he was accepted. Pete participated in NASA's Gemini, Apollo, and Skylab programs. In 1978, President Carter awarded him the Congressional Space Medal of Honor for rescuing Skylab, which had been damaged at launch. After he left NASA, Pete remained an outspoken proponent for the future of human spaceflight, defending the importance of the space shuttle program and recommending missions to Mars. Pete died in a motorcycle accident in 1999 and was buried with full honors at Arlington National Cemetery. Later, during a tree planting ceremony honoring his memory, Alan Bean pretended to channel Pete and instructed NASA to decorate his tree every Christmas season with colored lights instead of the white lights used for the other astronaut trees. This request was made in keeping to Pete's model, if you can't be good, be colorful. To this day, NASA decorates Pete Street with red lights. In 2008, I launched the Conrad Foundation to honor Pete and his passion for innovation and entrepreneurship. The foundation recognizes transformative education by energizing and engaging students in STEM fields through unique entrepreneurial opportunities. Apollo 12 may have been the second to land on the moon, but the ship its crew and their mission were second to none.